Hey guys, this is Zachariah Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars video. Today we will be discussing the Super Dreadnought, the Star of Coruscant, with some help from the phenomenal Star Wars channel 100% Star Wars. Now, we've actually featured 100% Star Wars on this channel before. He stepped in very kindly for me when I was on paternity leave with my daughter. And as anyone who watched that video knows, 100% Star Wars is an expert in Legends lore, especially when it comes to the Old Republic era, which is definitely one of of my weaker periods of Star Wars history. So if you enjoy this video, make sure to go check out the video he also did on the Eternal Fleet and go subscribe to his YouTube channel. Let's blow those numbers up as we did last time. Link to both down in the description. Let's roll the intro. While the concept of size matters not was important to certain members of the Jedi, to the Republic military, size meant everything. During the Great Galactic War with Emperor Vitiate's Sith Empire, Colonel Laren Omas of the Republic Special Forces Division and a variety of their top specialists and engineers drafted the concept of a starship beyond anything the galaxy had ever seen. A starship that eclipsed the biggest ships of both the Sith Empire and the Republic's current naval forces. This starship was destined to become the ultimate flagship of the Republic military, and it was to become a symbol of hope for the oppressed planets crushed under Imperial rule. Although the project was expensive in both credits and resource, the Republic understood what such a starship could achieve and represent, and the concept was approved by the Republic, and it was designated under a completely brand new class of starship, a Super Dreadnought. And so, the Star of Coruscant was born, and placed into secretive production within Republic territories, and along with its incomprehensible size, the Star of Coruscant itself was equipped with devastating and unique experimental weapons that were intended to turn the tide of war for the Republic. Alongside the rest of the Republic's experimental weaponry, the Star of Coruscant became the Republic's biggest singular constructional undertaking in existence. Nothing technologically of this magnitude had ever been built, and the Republic funneled a countless number of resources into not only building the Super Dreadnought, but keeping it a secret from the galaxy and the Sith Empire too. However, despite the colossal nature of the task before them, the construction of the Star of Coruscant went relatively smoothly, despite the fact they were fighting in a destructive war while building it. After its construction, the Star of Coruscant was kept hidden from the public eye as well as the Sith Empire, and in 3665 BBY, the Republic's confidence began to grow after several successful battles and campaigns. This confidence led their leaders to begin amassing a fleet of devastating, experimental prototype starships that were to be led by the Star of Coruscant, with the intent of eventually ending the war by attacking the Sith capital of Droman Kars. The Republic felt that if they could cut the head off of the snake and conquer their homeworld from where in which everything started, the entire Empire would lose complete morale, causing infighting amongst their leadership and internal civil wars that would ultimately allow them to stamp out the Sith Empire once and for all without too much resistance. But things rarely go to plan in wars, and the Republic would soon learn this the hard way. However, as the experimental fleet began to move through space, a hidden Chiss enclave on the planet Hoth decoded and interpreted secret transmissions indicating the existence of the rumoured Super Dreadnought. The transmissions also indicated that the Star of Coruscant was escorting an entire fleet of experimental ships through a secret route in the Outer Rim. The Chiss themselves, allies of the Empire, notified Imperial Intelligence and the Sith Empire mobilized a colossal strike force consisting of hundreds of starships to intercept and launch an ambush. The Empire knew that this was to be a deciding battle and spared no expense with the Star of Coruscant becoming their biggest priority in the war. As the Republic Navy moved through their secret route, the Sith fleet engaged and ambushed them, and given the size of each side's forces and the unique nature of the experimental Republic weapons, the ambush became a battle and the battle became a drawn-out conflict over the course of several days, across entire star systems. The experimental weapons along with the Star of Coruscant had managed to stave off the Sith Assault until the battle reached its pinnacle in orbit of Hoth itself. 
Both fleets had cornered one another, and the final battle was one of the most mutually destructive of the entire war. The Sith fleet focused its forces entirely into obliterating the Super Dreadnought, and in doing so, suffered severe losses to their own navy. And despite the Sith Empire's utter priority, the Super Dreadnought was simply undestroyable. The Sith Empire threw everything they could at it, and instead of destroying the Behemoth, they began to take a brand new approach. Their efforts and tactics in this new approach were eventually rewarded, and the Star of Coruscant somehow, despite its valiant defence, was disabled, and it plummeted into the icy depths below. However, the initial experimental shields, as well as the almost impenetrable thickness of its hull, kept the Star of Coruscant completely intact as it burned through the atmosphere, crashing into the icy tundras. During that battle over the icy planet, over 70 other vessels crashed into the surface of Hoth, carving out a section of the planet that would become known as the Starship Graveyard, with the Star of Coruscant becoming a gigantic monument to the Sith Empire's victory and the Galactic Republic's grand failure. The loss of the Star of Coruscant to the Republic was utterly catastrophic, and its destruction swung the tide of the war into the Empire's favour. Colonel Laren Omas himself, the leader of the Star of Coruscant project, was killed in the battle, and images of the star falling to the surface of Hoth was used aggressively within the Sith Empire as propaganda to its victory and success. As the decades passed, the Star of Coruscant languished in the desolation of Hoth, its systems shut down, becoming nothing more than another relic. Despite everything that it had represented, it had quickly become forgotten, forced to lie dormant until the Great Galactic War re-engulfed the galaxy and found its way back to Hoth. Both the Republic and the Sith had made their way back to the remote icy world, both building staging posts for their militaries and scientists, and while neither had the resources to fully recover or re-engineer their lost and prized technologies, they intended to strip what they could and dissolve it into their rapidly growing militaries that they both needed to win the war. Of course, amongst all of these downed starships, the Star of Coruscant had priority interest from both factions to be stripped. However, by this time within the war, the shell of the Star of Coruscant became the home and defensive fortress of a band of pirates known as the White Moor. Any entry that the Sith or the Republic had to the Star of Coruscant was met with fierce resistance, and neither faction truly managed to reverse engineer or recover it. And despite the fact that it was still intact and operational technologically, the Republic never attempted to recover their Super Dreadnought, and like everything on the planet, despite its grandeur, and all the hopes that were pinned upon it, the biggest, most colossal ship in Republic history was eventually buried, and the Star of Coruscant became lost to the cold embrace of time. I want to take a quick moment to say you have all been amazing to me. The outpouring of kindness and support has been so humbling, and I just want to thank all of you. And I want to thank Eckhart's Ladder as well, once again, especially because this opportunity has given me so much and I am so grateful. If you enjoyed this video, perhaps consider heading over to my channel 100% Star Wars and subscribing. And if you haven't, be sure to hit that subscribe button below and support Eckhart's Ladder himself. Hopefully, I'll see you guys in the next video. But until then, may the Force be with you. Always.